Hey everybody, it's Brooke with The Buttered Home and welcome to my messy kitchen. Tonight we have a real treat in store for you and it's more really a recipe that kind of highlights the seasoning. Uh, tonight we're going to be showing you our pan fried fish or we like to call it pan fried cod. Cod is in great supply here and uh, you can find it individually frozen in packets but really this method and the seasoning that we're using can be used really for any kind of fish so tonight it's just pan fried fish because we're going to show you two different kinds of fish because i'm out of cod <laughs> imagine that so with this will illustrate to you that while this is great for cod it's also great for other things too so we have about a pound and a half of some really pretty salmon that i picked up at the grocery store and some pacific whiting that i did have on hand um, aldi you can get this fish that is individually frozen so if you've got a small crowd or a large crowd and it's relatively inexpensive um, and you can keep it on hand and it's like it's freezer or vacuum packed in freezer bags and it's great um, to have for that very reason but i wanted to show the diversity number one because i thought i had cod and number two <laughs> that this method and season is good for just about any kind of fish uh, so we are taking just a paper towel and just kind of drying our fish off they're on paper towels on my platter so that's getting the underside but we want to get all that moisture off of the top because we want the uh, fish to absorb the seasoning that we're about to put together to put on them so I'm gonna swap the camera around so that you can see what we're doing. Uh, and in our pan on our burner here, I have got about, God, I think about two tablespoons of olive oil and one tablespoon of butter. So we're gonna get that heating up and melting so that it'll be ready for our fish uh, whenever we get the seasoning mixed up and get them put, on, put it on there. I can't talk tonight. What's up with that? <laughs> That's what else is new, right? So let me swap the camera around and we'll come back and show you how we put all this wonderful pan fried healthy fish together for you. So stay with us. Okay, so we are back and we have our butter and olive oil melting in our pan. And I am going to throw all of this, I guess, fish rub together right here on the side for you so you can see. So we've got a small bowl. It doesn't take, you know, a big bowl. And we want to add in a half a teaspoon of garlic powder. And I like using dry seasonings for this uh, because they adhere to the fish a lot better. Then we are going to add to that, let's see, a half a teaspoon of onion powder. And then an eighth of a teaspoon of celery seed. So you don't need but just a very little bit of that celery seed in there that it packs a big punch it goes a long long way um, so if you don't love celery seed you can actually just leave that out all together if you wanted to and then we're going to put in two whole teaspoons of smoked paprika y'all know that i love smoked paprika especially on like fish and poultry it adds a really smoky yummy flavor to anything that you cook and it also adds a bit of color too and then to that we're going to add just about probably about maybe a quarter to a half a teaspoon of salt and i since i've been on this healthier eating kick i really really like this himalayan pink salt um it it has just a ton of flavor to it and it doesn't have like iodine or other chemicals in it it's just it's great so you just mix all that up and then you're just going to take it and you're just going to kind of sprinkle it over your fish and i start with a little and can you see what i'm doing i start with a little and make sure i ration it out really well and then I come back to all my pieces. And then I just take it 
and I just kind of push it off and around like that and get it good and covered and then I just kind of shake it off and then I pick up my fish and shake it off and then lay my fish back down where the seasoning has come off and that just makes it a ton easier and then you can get that good seasoning on both sides of your fish and like I said this is something that you can use for any type of fish uh, and the cooking method is the same no matter no matter how you do it so we've got our pan good and hot I've got it on about low to medium heat and I'm gonna cook the whiting first just because it'll cook a lot faster and we're going to add that to our pan carefully add that to our pan and we're only going to cook this just about a minute or two on each side I'm going to wash my hands off while that gets going and get a pair of tongs because I don't have any imagine that I'm not prepared <laughs> I gotta get all this paprika off my hands. And the great thing about this is this is a good general base. If you wanted to add some kick to it, you could add a little cayenne, you could add a little black pepper, just the sky's the limit. But the combination of the garlic and the onion and the celery seed really make a really big difference in what you've got going on. And, um, it's just a nice combination and you can add to that or take away however you you want to do it it's uh, really this is just to get you started like a lot of our other recipes this is just to kind of get you thinking about your food all right so that looks like it's curling up a little bit on the ends so we're just gonna flip it over and see how it's got a nice little crust on it that's another thing with this seasoning it gives it a good browned crust and it's just it's a, a thing of real beauty it's something to behold that's for sure all right now i'm going to get just a few more paper towels and another pan because i'm going to take those up and let them rest now after we flipped them over we're going to just add about a teaspoon or a tablespoon of lemon juice and just let those kind of simmer in that lemon juice and if you're not sure if your fish is done I'm going to show you a really quick and easy way of how to tell you can simply take a fork and just put it in the middle and you should see it kind of come apart and flake so that fish is done so we're going to take it up if it doesn't fall apart <laughs> that's the thing with using this white fish it doesn't have like that skin on the back so it can fall apart but trust me when I tell you it just really does not matter whoever you're serving it to won't care it's fantastic all right, so now we're going to do the same thing with our salmon, except our salmon is a little thicker, so it might require a little bit more than just about one or two minutes on each side. And you can do this in batches, or if you have four small fillets, you can do them all at once in your pan. If you have to, if you need more liquid, you can add more butter later. And it works just fine just the same now because the salmon is a little more dense I am going to go ahead and add that lemon juice to it right now so that it can kind of help the cooking process along but this is the easiest probably tastiest method that I have found for cooking fish in a hurry and whether you've got a big crowd or a small crowd is so very easy to do and so very easy to execute. So, I mean, I feel bad even saying that this is a recipe, right? Because, I mean, it is. It's for the seasoning, but you can 
expand on that and make it your own, which is what we hope you'll do. All right, so those have cooked about a minute. And I'm going to go ahead and turn them over and see you've got a nice brown little crust going on. The majority of what we want to happen on the salmon anyway is whenever we flip it. So we're going to let this finish cooking for about two to five more minutes because it is a thicker filet. And then we'll be back to show you the finished product and how gorgeous this pan fried fish is. So y'all stay with us. All right, everybody, we are back. We have finished that cook time. It did take about five to seven minutes for our salmon to finish. So just know the thicker the filet that you use, the little bit longer of a cook time you're gonna have, but it still turned out perfect. We did the fork test with it, just like I showed you. We just take it and we put it right in the middle of the fish and just turn and you should start to see it flake away and then it's done. Now, I like to just take a little bit of parsley because I like color. And this has a ton of color with all that smoked paprika. I mean, it does. But that little pop of green, it just adds a nice little flair. <laughs> so this is our pan fried fish. And y'all, isn't it gorgeous? Yes, it's red and it's dark, but it is full of some really smoky yet bright flavors. So lemon and fish go together. It's not Big D's favorite thing. He tasted it and he was like, it's got too much lemon. <laughs> but he's, as he says, overly sensitive to lemon. So if you're overly sensitive to lemon, use a little bit less than what we did, but it's still absolutely delicious because I think lemon and fish go together. You could totally serve this up on a bed of rice or a nice salad. We're actually sauteing some um, cabbage slaw and some mushrooms and peppers and onions to go with it. Um, that's like staple in my house. We love, <laughs> we love the peppers and the onions and the mushrooms all together sauteed. And we'll serve this fish on top of that. And it's fantastic. I just want to show you how absolutely wonderful and flaky and beautiful. Look at that salmon. Oh, gosh. It's, it's great. And the white fish, the white fish is equally as flaky. It just falls apart. It's fantastic. Restaurant quality fish in a frying pan with just a few ingredients. I mean, and this was probably, well, fish prices right now are kind of high. <clears throat> But this was probably six or seven dollars a serving. So I challenge you to go out and eat salmon for that in a restaurant. And you can do it quick at home and not have to go anywhere and have very little cleanup. So this is our pan fried fish or as it is on the website, pan fried cod. Cod is in season for us all year round. It's a very popular flaky white fish. So that's what we use for the recipe. And while I'm at it, if you didn't know this already, we have a website, thebutteredhome.com. We would love for you to give us a visit over there. And at the bottom of each recipe post is a print button where you can print all of our recipes for free. Um, while I would very much like to do a cookbook, I don't really feel like a cookbook is fair whenever you can go to my website and have everything that I do at your fingertips for free. Um, I do this because I love it. Uh, I try to make enough money for it to pay for itself because it's not cheap. The lights and the cameras and um, everything that I do that I had no idea <laughs> was involved in having a food blog uh, is, can be expensive. So um, as long as it pays for itself, we get our greatest joy from teaching you how to cook and helping you fall back in love with cooking again. Um, and that's what we're here for. And that is what we've been doing for almost four years now. So if you've been with us that long, you um, are very important to our family. You've helped grow us where we are. And we hope to always be able to give you anything that we do for free or at a very low cost minimum. Um, 
uh, because that's that's my goal is to get you in the kitchen not get in your pocketbook <laughs> so this recipe along with all of our others as like i said before can be found at thebutteredhome.com we would really appreciate you giving us a uh, visit over there make sure that you're following us on all of our social channels we have lots of fun and share videos like this uh, and so many more every week. Um, there's always something going on at The Buttered Home and we love to share that with you. And if you want all of our videos in one convenient place, make sure that you're subscribed to our YouTube channel. We are, well, we hit our goal. We hit our goal of a certain number of subscribers this week and, or last week, and it, ha it was fantastic. Um, what would help me now is if you would watch videos over there as well. So it, just go through and look, and if you see something you haven't seen, then take a few minutes and watch it. Um, creators like me depend on these ads that pop up in our videos to kind of help pay the bills, and that doesn't cost you anything but your time. It's no different than watching a commercial on TV, um, and it helps us continue to bring you great content like this. So we appreciate all your watches uh, on all of our social platforms and if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel help us out by watching some of our videos over there as well so Big D and I have lots of fish to eat and we're hungry I didn't say hungry I said hungry <laughs> so your challenge this week is to use that word in a sentence in conversation with a stranger hungry so as usual Stay with us. We have a June packed full of some healthy recipes and some not so healthy. So make sure that you're with us for that. And as usual, oh, and happy Memorial Day too. Uh, special thanks to um, all military families out there, especially those that paid the ultimate sacrifice, which is who we remember today and who we uh, celebrate. It's so much more than hamburgers and hot dogs, y'all. And we're very grateful and thankful to our military and our military families and those that lost a loved one um, defending our freedoms. So y'all have a wonderful rest of your Memorial Day and an even better week as we roll into June, full summer, from the buttered home to your home. We love you guys. Bye.